Yeah, it looks like Trump's going to win. As of right now, it looks like Donald Trump will win re-election in 2024, or he will win an election for a second second term because he's not president right now. Here's the story. The big leads got it. Giant Trump or death flag makes appearance at Yankee Stadium during God Bless America. Wow. That's a bold statement, but it, ex- it shows the sentiment of many people who are supporting Donald Trump. Why? Well, many on the left will say it's a cult. And for some, it kind of is. Donald Trump is uh, definitely has his cult of personality, but it's not the majority. I talked to some of the most diehard Trump supporters, and it's really, in a lot of ways, not even about Trump. Trump's been booed before at his own rallies. His supporters aren't big fans of uh, big pharma and the vaccine. But Donald Trump just looks like a human Molotov cocktail. That's about it. CNN right now is freaking out. Biden's unpopularity could give Trump his shot at reclaiming power. Yeah, give him his shot. It's basically happening. Here's a story from the big lead. The New York Yankees hosted hosted the Detroit Tigers in the Bronx last night, and everything was perfectly normal as two teams who will not be playing October baseball near the end of their obligations until the traditional signing of God Bless America in the seventh inning when Donald Trump supporters unfurled an enormous flag reading Trump or death from the mezzanine. And when we say enormous, we mean really enormous. There are bigger fish to fry in terms of the ramifications of all this, but it's worth mentioning that getting something like that into the stadium seems difficult. Seriously. The poor Nathan's famous sign a few feet over was just sitting there all awkwardly wondering how it possibly found itself in the situation. Its one job is to remind people about hot dogs and how many a human can eat in 10 minutes. Something about this railing must make it the ideal display for pro-Trump signs back in 2021. Two fans were ejected from uh, ejected for hanging a Trump one banner from the same perch. That one got a lot more reaction, led to a scuffle with stadium security. But here we are, my friends. It's kind of a crazy story. It's got a little trend going on Twitter, and I think it shows you exactly where we're headed. You ready for some shocking information coming out of 538? Yeah, Trump won. I'm saying like as of right now, I'm not talking about 2020. Calm down. If the election happens now, Trump wins. Yeah, sorry, man. Take a look at this from the latest polls. DeSantis loses to Joe Biden. Wow, that's shocking to me. This is from premise 538 polls, August 30th to September 5th. Biden versus DeSantis has Biden up two points. Biden versus Trump. Trump is up six points. In another poll, DeSantis is down two and Trump is up five. Moving down to September 4th morning consult, we have Biden beating both Trump and DeSantis. Unsurprising. Trump's not going to win every single poll. Echelon Insights, August 31st. DeSantis loses to Biden. Trump beats Biden. That's crazy. And then CNN, polling all the different candidates of which I really don't care about. They say Chris Christie beats Biden. Ramaswamy does not. DeSantis ties. Tim Scott Pence, Haley all beat Biden. And they have Nikki Haley beating Biden by six points. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. If you want to uh, blow up more kids, Nikki Haley's the candidate for you. Donald Trump wins by one point. I'll take Trump, who gave us the Abraham Accords and a timeline for getting out of the Middle East. Here we go. August 30th, the Wall Street Journal, Trump beats Biden. August 29th, The Economist, Trump beats Biden. I love this one. University of California at Berkeley. Biden beats Trump by 20 points. Sorry, forgive me, University of California at Berkeley, if I think your poll is complete garbage, because 20 points is insane in any context for any reason. But my friends, what we're seeing now in the polls is uh, Donald Trump wins. I don't think Trump lost any supporters. Now, there may be some churn and burn but Trump has gained. So I think probably Trump is slightly up a little bit. You can see it in the approval ratings in the polls. What I mean to say is Trump may lose a supporter here and there, but probably unlikely. But he gains a couple here and there. I think the reality of what we're seeing is that Trump's base is standing firm and Biden is losing support. Nate Cohn on Twitter says CNN SSRS shows Trump up one. And the underlying story is much like the other polls. Biden hitting his targets among whites. Really? but leading 58 to 34 among non-white voters. As I wrote yesterday, he says it's basically a myth 
The problem is that minorities and black voters especially almost always poll worse than they actually turn out. It's not true. It says, hopefully helpful for all of your cross tab, uh, you cross tab divers in the future among black voters. Democrat support is now below 80 percent. That's crazy. And Republican support is now upwards near 20. And don't get me wrong. I'm not entirely convinced we'll actually see those numbers. Polling is probably not completely accurate in that regard. But I do think it shows the trend is there. CNN says the devastating verdict voters delivered to President Joe Biden in a new CNN poll is especially stark ahead of the most unprecedented election in modern times. 14 months before his fate is decided, Biden's unpopularity may be brewing the only possible conditions in which a disgraced and anti-democratic ex-president who might be a convicted felon by election day, would be able to squeeze back power. It begs the question of how GOP frontrunner Donald Trump, whose administration was a four-year cacophony of chaos, scandal, and fury, blah, 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 shut up, CNN. What's the question? How could he be locked in a statistical tie among registered voters with Biden after facing 91 criminal charges? It's because your narrative machine is broken. And we know you're lying. I can, can I just point something out? I am so tired of people saying begs the question. It doesn't mean that. Uh, begs the question means basically is circular logic. But now it begs the question. I love this. What they're really saying it is it, it makes us wonder. You can just say that it begs the question because people who don't know what the original meaning is think it's saying it is. They, they interpret the phrase begging the question as to mean it is humbly requesting that somebody ask how this could be possible. Humbly ask this question. Dude, you can just literally ask it. You can say, we wonder how it's possible. But anyway, I'm done being nitpicky. The chief rationale behind Biden, Biden's bid for a second term is that he is the best positioned Democrat to beat Trump again. He's not. But unless political conditions change significantly in the coming months, that narrative may be in doubt. If the president goes on to lose re-election to Trump, or any other Republican, the warning signs contained in the CNN poll, which mirrors his troubles in other recent surveys, but goes far deeper on reasons for his malaise, will have foreshadowed the story of his downfall. The survey conducted by SSRS and released on Thursday paints a picture of a pessimistic and divided nation that is far from experiencing the return to normality that had been promised in 2020 by Biden, a president the country finds neither inspiring nor worthy of confidence. You see Kamala Harris? She said that uh, she's ready to take over should Joe Biden fall ill or incapacitated. Oh, man. Is that how they do it? I've talked about the possibility. The the way you get Gavin Newsom in. Joe Biden goes to a rally in California, suffers a medical incident. Gavin Newsom runs out, saves the day. And that is how you swap people out. Here's another scenario. Joe Biden suffers a medical incident and Kamala Harris assumes the role of acting president. Joe Biden is incapacitated and can't run again. Kamala Harris says she does not want to run for president in this way. That she was a team with Joe Biden and that, you know, seeing Joe go out this way, she'll humbly stand aside, humbly stand aside to be there for Joe. But that she cannot, in good faith, run for president. Something like that could work. It's possible. And then Gavin Newsom steps up and says, you did the right thing. You helped this nation in a time of need. Thank you for everything you've done. A lot of people think that Kamala Harris will get a Supreme Court appointment or something like that. Maybe there's talk of some retirements. We'll see how that goes. But I do think it is fair to say with Biden failing in the polls right now, it's giving Trump supporters some hope, but they could swap him out and that could change things. A large portion of Democrats, I think in the 60 percent, like 63 percent or 68, say they can't vote for the guy. He's too old. So what do they do? Gavin Newsom. He's the only guy they got right now. I don't see Newsom winning. I can't see Newsom beating Donald Trump. Joe Biden was always a maybe because people hate Donald Trump, but Newsom is too uh, plastic. I just don't see it. There's a possibility, of course, that things play out this way, but I can only tell you right now, you ain't seen nothing yet. With the arrest, with with the sentencing guidelines of Owen Schroyer for his speech, with the arrest of lawyers, they are not going to just let Trump win a regular old election. It'll get interesting. How it plays out, we don't know for sure, my friends. But with people dropping these banners, with the polls where we're currently at, 
they better do something dramatic if they think if they want to try to win, because right now it's Trump, baby, right now. And that could change. So I hope everybody's paying attention. I hope you go knock on doors. You advocate as much as you can and you vote. I'll leave it there. Next segment is up tonight at 8 p.m. over at YouTube.com slash Timcast IRL. Come watch the show and hang out live and I'll see you all then.